Hi, we will be looking now at the second part of tier three, it's ethics of using resources. We'll be looking at cradle to cradle, urban metabolism, biomimicry, and green chemistry. Now for us, what does that mean? If this means that we have a way forward. This is going to dictate a way for us to design differently now. Because we understand that these ecosystem uh, services, we have to maintain them and we need to give back because we're, we respect, not, we're not using nature, we're actually respecting it, giving back to it. This is the way we need to view technology and design. Now, this means that we need a shift towards um, ethical use of resources to have these, to maintain these ecosystem services. We need to move towards something we call circular economy, which is what we're going to look at uh, next. Uh, cradle to cradle versus uh, cradle to, cr to grave. Technical cycle needs to match the biological cycle where things are being reused again. Do no harm to the people and the ecology. Zero waste and waste management systems where we can recycle, upcycle, but keep the recycling till the last option. Um, factories and industries to follow green chemistry principles, which is also something that we will be looking at. Um, design eco-friendly material. Um, work on plant-based material and work with mycelium and microorganism-based uh, materials, bacteria as well. Um, a lot of uh, bricks now are being built from mycelium and bacteria is also used in buildings um, for building structures because they grow uh, in certain ways so they can in increase the amount of material, the raw material, as they digest and feed on them. Um, urban metabolism, use energy efficient material, uh, um, space efficient material, work with waste as a renewable source, meaning compost more, reuse and repurpose things by, and by upcycling them. Uh, have government uh, policies and codes for as renewable um, energy in our cities and neighborhoods. You may have heard of it, cradle to cradle. Perhaps you're wondering, what is that? Well, here's an explanation. About 160,000 years ago, the first Homo sapiens started to evolve into who we are now, consumers. In 1804, Earth hosted one billion people. Now we have increased to over 6.7 billion, and every day around 200,000 people join us on this planet. In modern culture, we are surrounded by commercial products, products that make our lives pleasurable and more convenient. So imagine there are 6.7 billion of us. This means mass production. Being able to produce all these products means we need resources, and lots of them. But there's a problem. During all these years, we've kept on using resources, but using without thinking of reusing has led to a potential problem. The time will come that there will be a resource scarcity sooner than most of us realize. And the other problem is waste. Most companies are still working with a take, make, waste industrial system. Carefully designed products are thrown away quicker than before. There's a clear need to react to these problems. Luckily, they are getting more and more attention from both companies and consumers. Two strategies can be indicated. Firstly, the strategy to minimize. Use fewer materials, use less energy because of more energy efficient technologies. And with that, reduce the carbon footprint. But this still only postpones the moment resources will be exhausted. And despite reductions, with an increasing world population, volumes keep growing. You could say this current approach is known as reuse, reduce and recycle. And though this is a good start, it is only being less bad. Let me introduce strategy two. Rethink the way we make things and use materials effectively. This is not about being less bad, 
but about becoming 100% good by improving quality. We can start working from a vision where waste equals food. This is what Michael Brangart and William McDonough have developed and named Cradle to Cradle. So while a good start is to reduce the consumption of materials and stimulate recycling and minimize the amount of energy used in a product life cycle, Cradle to Cradle is about keeping all materials in continuous cycles, stimulating the use of renewable energy only, and celebrating diversity. This requires a different design approach. The design of a product is optimized for its functionality, beauty, and quality to fulfill the need of a customer. But in addition, the design is thought through on how to disassemble it and how the used materials are valuable to nature or as resources for the production of new products. We need to know exactly what materials are being used, because who wants their child to play with toys that are full of hazardous chemicals? In cradle-to-cradle -cradle design, every part of the product is designed with the intention of bringing it back in the technical cycle or biological cycle. Imagine that we no longer use materials, but we borrow them instead. Then, waste would no longer exist. Apart from thinking about materials, cradle-to-cradle -cradle design also considers two other important aspects. Firstly, stimulate the use of renewable energy only. Did you know that every day the sun radiates more energy than the world has used since time began? Using only renewable energy means we can use it endlessly. Secondly, celebrate diversity. Look around you. Look at nature as the best example of diversity. Flora and fauna adapt to local situations and make use of local resources. With cradle-to-cradle -cradle design, companies can differentiate with innovative products and make money with 100% good stuff designed for its functionality, beauty, and quality. Also, they will profit from cost savings and added value. Who benefits? You. Because wouldn't it be great if our children and children's children can enjoy the same quality of life or better because we set good intentions and have redesigned the way we make things? This is what motivates us. Now, when a product is being sustainable, this means it has a low impact and it has follows ethical labor uh, rights or strategies. The material is not hazardous, the material and the ingredients, they or the ingredients, and there's no depletion of natural resources, waste ex uh, material extraction. The life cycle, uh, minimum to no waste, social and environmental benefits, useful and durable and um, disposable, it can be reused, repurposed, recycled, or composted in simple ways and terms. So maybe you need to think about examples around you. Pause this and like take a moment to yourself and think of what things around you at, how, uh, at your house uh, are sustainable uh, products and, and you know, how, can you, how can you switch to using more sustainable products? Now, I like this uh, representation because, you know, it's very simple and we can all follow that. It's okay to repeat clothes, to reuse clothes, sustainable fashion here. And I, you, and I uh, encourage you to look up, just if you're interested in sustainable fashion, to look up how companies and factories are moving towards sustainable fashion um, uh, ways of doing things. Um, not to update your phone, meaning you don't have to buy a new one. Um, you don't. You can buy secondhand items if they are in good quality. Good quality lasts long. We say old but gold. Uh, live in a simple home. I mean, why would we want this extravagant uh, way of? It's good to have good quality, but not to overdo it. I mean, okay. So invest in things that last long, so they pay back. Uh, it's okay to live a simple life, meaning that you are engaging in the natural world more. 
you're not consume you're walking more you're you you're saving uh, fuel and energy you're saving space uh, you're enjoying the little and simple things in life um and obviously it's going to make us better now we want more circular economy more things to be reused again and less of binning things um, away so here's um, kind of the hierarchy on a cone of uh, how we can uh, work with the materials that we have. We can reduce as much as possible our consumption of disposables or even refuse. I like the word refuse more. Um, reuse things again in the, ha in the house. We can, and even in projects, we can reuse materials around the house. Um, refill materials uh, with other things like jars, for example, and bottles and cans, um, repair and repurpose whatever we have. So we don't, so we're being resource efficient, replace with eco-friendly material, recycle is kind of, yes, okay, this is now the time to go to recycle, but it's not the best option always because it uses energy and water. And, um, at the end, we can throw in the bin, and that's something that we can avoid. Uh, and it's doable. I mean, I, I kind, I do this. I've been monitoring how much waste I have, I produce for a month, for each month, and it's very possible if you make your own organic compost, and if you collect uh, the bottles and use them again, or um, you send them to recycling. Basically, you will not be wasting anything except for some small parts that cannot be used again. But uh, everything is um, re reusable. And I would like you to try a garbology, we call it a garbology activity, where you see how much waste you have produced over a certain uh, period and, and see how you can reduce this amount of uh, waste. Ireland, for example, is now banning single-use plastic. Good for them. Um, this guy, he made a boat um, out of these um, bottles. And um, if you've taken any physics course with me, you have probably upcycled a lot of material in order to design something. So it is very possible and doable. So we want to move from garbage to garden. Here's a nice example of how these bottles were upcycled um, and they were used for aesthetics, you know, and they, and they actually, these, the, um, the labels can be removed if you place them in hot water, but here they didn't even use water, they didn't waste water uh, or energy. And uh, you can make your own compost and I will show you how it's done um, in a clip. So you can do it at home and it's a very simple process. We need neighborhoods that, that allow us to collect and separate our waste efficiently. So it's more of a, um, a collective responsibility, but we need everyone to be involved because the problem is we ha it's kind of, uh, there's no awareness and people just have this mindset that uh, someone will take care of it for me and I, that's not my responsibility. Uh, but obviously this is all, it's our responsibility to take care of, uh, of our neighborhoods and our cities. Now, wealth and waste, if um, basically here, this is how we can compost. Um, and waste, the compost needs to have nitrogen and carbon. So they can either be in the ratio of one to one, or it can be ratio of uh, two to uh, one. Now, the nitrogen comes from vegetable waste and fruit waste. Uh, the carbon comes from shredded paper, cardboard, wood, grass. For a compost scheme for a neighborhood, it's possible to build these beds for them that have uh, these dimensions, um, which basically would be one cubic meter or a minimum of one cubic meter or uh, one by two by one. And this is where you can fill your, um, your organic material. It's always better to shorten your food chain. Because when you shorten your food chain, you shorten your energy consumption of fuel. So if you can grow it at home, that's that's the best way. Uh, the best way. Uh, if you have a local farmer in your neighborhood, that's even better. 
um, if you have a local farmer, then that's also a good way. There's also farmer's market within walking distance, but then the problem when it comes to uh, supermarkets, then is going to be a lot of distribution involved in packaging, and this is where the problem starts. Um, and food delivery service will mean that there's a lot of transportation involved in carbon footprint, print, uh, footprint. So we want to shift towards, you know, growing our own food or supporting our local uh, farms and farmers markets. Now let's watch this video about urban metabolism. This time in history, more people live in cities than in rural areas. Cities consume 75% of Earth's resources and account for 60 to 80% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And they're growing by the second. By 2050, more than two thirds of the world's population will live in cities. Limits to Earth's resources challenge the ability of cities to accommodate this growth. At the rate at which humanity consumes today, we would require the equivalent of 1.6 Earths to continue to meet our resource needs and absorb our wastes. But we only have one. To live within the planet's boundaries and improve quality of life for the poor, we need to achieve more with less. Cities must supply services in ways that are resource efficient, climate friendly, resilient and equitable. Urban metabolism studies help us to understand what happens to resources in a city between their points of entry and their exit from the city as wastes. By viewing the city as an organism that consumes resources and produces wastes, we can find ways to improve resource use and reduce environmental impact. Many cities have what is called a linear metabolism, where the vast majority of resources that enter the city leave it again as solid, liquid and airborne wastes. The key to a sustainable, resilient city is to harness these wastes as resources. This results in resource flow loops and a circular metabolism. For example, wastewater treatment plants can go beyond cleaning water to capture methane for energy and nutrients to enrich the soil. Recirculating these resources within the city can reduce resource imports and wastes. Urban metabolism studies can be used to identify appropriate infrastructure and planning interventions that will save resources. This not only saves the city money in the long run, but can also help to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane. City stakeholders can lead the way by monitoring their resource use, learning from similar cities, educating decision makers about infrastructure alternatives, and improving resource efficiency in their buildings and operations. To learn how to better manage resources in your city, visit www.resourceefficientcities.org. Okay, so for sustainable, <clears throat> for sustainable um, urban planning strategies, um, we can set codes for companies and factories to perform life cycle assessments to assess environmental impacts associated with the stages of a product's life, from raw material extraction through materials processing, manufacture distribution and use, and waste management and disposal, disposal with the quality and quantity of waste, eco-friendly materials and uh, supplies, air quality and green buildings. So uh, this this will be some can be something that every um, industry needs to do. Codes for shops can be also added for reusable shopping bags, recycling bins in big supermarkets, waste management and disposable uh, disposal for quality and quantity as well, eco-friendly materials and supplies, air quality and passive heating and cooling to reduce the use of AC units and radiators. Rely on natural light to reduce electricity requirements and install um, photovoltaic cells uh, for um, for renewable energy design, um, installing and water catchment system. For schools, a waste management and disposal disposal uh, system. Um, Eco-friendly materials and supplies should be also used. Greening school buildings and uh, through passive heating and cooling to reduce the amount of energy and uh, light and heat. And installing photovoltaic cells, having water catchment systems, start gardens, farms and allotments at schools, as well as a composting system. 
Um, raising awareness about the importance and the active role of local agriculture in, in for food supplies and health requirements. Encourage and invite the youth and schools and families to take part in greening processes of neighborhoods, harvest food uh, and mulch soil, make their own natural products, upcycle materials and reuse them, uh, reduce the water consumption and save water, um, reduce electrical energy supply and renewable and use uh, renewable energy and install it in their homes. Uh, valuing resources, so raise awareness about soil fert fert uh, fertility as something that we should be really aware and proud of at the same time. We fight climate change in, due to having a fertile soil and um, raise awareness about the importance of keeping open land and fertile soil in improving the climate through the role of insects and plants that sequester carbon dioxide and fix nitrogen, which also makes uh, food more healthy and nutritious and reduces the need to to health supplements, educating about the flora and fauna in Jordan to empower locals as well as um, as a touristic attraction for as a point of strength. Um, encourage competitions, rewards, reduce taxes, benefits and perks for showing environmental responsibility of any form. Encourage new small businesses to collect and separate plastic and glass bottles and containers and deliver to sterilization points to be reused and upcycled. Encourage cooking and seasonal um, with so seasonal local food and give reminders of the benefits of eating and cooking healthy. Encourage homes to take part in garden competitions and uh, make uh, homemade uh, beauty and cleaning um, and art uh, products by uh, referring to eco-friendly ma material. Uh, encourage people to gain hands-on uh, skills to fix their homes and to learn how to catch water and plant food, food at their homes through permaculture techniques. So all of these were recommendations that I uh, wrote for a sustainability plan for Jordan. And for waste quality and quantity, encourage the use of washable gloves uh, during you know, the pandemic. Impose a rule for homes with gardens to make a compost at home. Separate waste into recycling bins to be reused, including paper, glass, wood, steel, and plastic. Um, Collection of waste to, to be sterilized and used again for circular economy. Encourage donating, reusing, um, and secondhand shops for clothing and uh, electronics. Um, set codes for um, uh, sustainable fashion industries. Uh, upcycle waste to make art. Uh, use IT to replace uh, paper and banknotes in school. So use uh, e-receipts and apps. Um, Encourage nature cleanups, hiking, walking, cycling, and outdoor gyms and exercise. Uh, responsible internal uh, tourism free from littering and destruction of natural uh, nature and land. Uh, value and protect um, people who um, pr protect them from harassment, for, who enjoy outdoor uh, exercise. Use traditional wisdom to connect with nature and respect nature to make remedy and make remedies. Um, and uh, make beauty products and homemade cleaning products. Upcycle of um, waste uh, be and, and uh, make useful materials at home and also educational projects from upcycled material. Social media platforms to get invested in sharing and supporting the above uh, stories and uh, initiatives. Now this takes, now on to nature's way. So nature has uh, life principles and one of them is use life friendly chemistry um, uh, that's because nature a uh, chemistry that supports life processes so basically nature does its own chemistry in water nature break breaks down materials into benign constituents and so we need to use chemistry in which decomposition results in no harmful byproducts build selectively with small subset of elements and do chemistry in water use water as a solvent Recycle all materials, keep all materials in the loop. Fit form to function, select the shape or the form to the basis that we need. Use low energy processes to minimize energy consumption by reducing uh, material and use catalysts. Uh, for that. In green chemistry, we apply very similar concepts. Basically, uh, we focus on waste prevention. Um, and so there are no, so basically we prioritize the prevention of waste rather than cleaning up and treating waste after it has been created. We plan ahead of time to minimize any products that can be produced as waste. 
Uh, atom economy means reducing the waste at the molecular level by maximizing the number of atoms uh, that are being used um, in to make the product and also use the material, not using too much material, so material efficiency. Less hazardous chemical synthesis, so I'm not producing something harmful. I'm designing safer chemicals uh, that are away from, far from toxicity, and we need to do uh, predict and evaluate the aspects such as physical properties, toxicity, and environmental fate throughout the design process. Design for safe uh, solvents such as nature, water, or eco-friendly uh, solvents. Use uh, renewable feedstocks, materials that are plant-based sources, and uh, chemicals that originate from petrochemical sources. Um, reduce the derivatives, so extra material. This means like extra waste. Um, catalyst would reduce the amount of energy needed, so it, it makes it more energy efficient. Design for degradation, design things that can decompose easily and be broken down easily. Um, Real-time pollution uh, prevention also um, means that at, you know, on short term and long term, the pollution is going to be minimized. So we need to ask ourselves, how can we now start designing in a way that um, ensures that the industry is uh, applying green chemistry principles so that we are working ethically and working with our planet.